Now that the process is finished building, I have all the libraries and the plugins. I do not have the test programs though because we made a design decision to not automatically build the test programs. In fact, we have discussed removing the test programs entirely from the build system. However, they are currently in my version, <clears throat> so I made them an optional target. And I actually have created an aggregate target that allows me to build just the test programs on demand. So if I do make help, I can see I have an aggregate target here called executables. So if I build that, it will build all the test programs. Now, fortunately, I have not installed the NVIDIA drivers on my system, so I'm missing some OpenGL dependencies. And we can see my build process has failed here. I would like to actually get a test program built just for demonstration purposes. So I do know that I have one program that does not depend on OpenGL, and that's the MEM test program. So if I do make MEM, <coughs> it only depends on the memory library and it will build OK. Now CMake has really good dependency tracking. So if I had not built the Chosky libraries first and I didn't make mem, it would actually know that it depends on the memory library and it would build just that component first and any other dependencies it has. So CMake I find has very good dependency tracking and I rarely need to do a make clean and rebuild. So I encourage you to push CMake really hard and see how far you can take it. Um, chances are it will actually do the right thing and when it does the right thing it will save you a lot of time because you're not wasting time doing a make clean because you're not sure if something was left in a stale state. Now I want to show you the layout here and you'll notice that I have a bin directory and a lib directory. So if I go into the lib directory this is where I put all the uh, output for the libraries. And conversely, for the bin directory, that's where I put all the executables. Now, don't depend on this. This is true for this makefile generator and a few other generators. But for some of the other generators, such as Xcode and Visual Studio, we've made different locations because we try to respect what the IDE does. Because the IDE has different ideas about where things should go, and it facilitates their mechanisms to do um, release and debug builds and other types of uh, support that the make, gener make file generator doesn't necessarily think about. So for the make file build, you will find the products here, but if you try to write scripts for these things for automation, do not depend on this. Instead, you should basically use the make install target. But before I move on to make install, I do want to show that CMake does have some mechanisms um, in place to, do, to help you debug. So let me go to the bin directory, and my caps lock is stuck. Bin directory, and oh, that's interesting. There we go. I'm not sure how case insensitive worked here, but whatever. <clears throat> so I have my mem executable, and you can see that I can actually run the mem executable even though the dynamic library is not installed on my system. So mem depends on the IA mem. But normally, you would have to do a make install, and it'd have to be in like user lib, or it'd have to be uh, an environmental variable set, or you'd have to change your slash etc slash ld config. But in this case, CMake for ELF systems is very aggressive about R paths, and when you build in place, it will set the R path so you can actually run these things in your output directories. So if I do LDD on mem, you can see that the R path is set to the um, location that um, the temporary output has been um, located to. But if I actually do a make install and the executable gets installed, CMake will actually rewrite the R path so the executable points to the installed library. So this is a really handy thing for development because it saves you the hassle of having to install everything if you just want to do a temporary um, test. So let me show you the make install stage. So we have a target called make install and then we also have a make uninstall. And I provide the make uninstall so it's a little it's a little hacky. <laughs> but let's do the make install first. So we'll do sudo make install and I have to do my password. And you'll see that 
everything gets installed to user local something. And we have the libs here and the includes here. Now conversely, we have a make uninstall, and this is something that I wrote um, with some help from stuff on the internet. And this will basically undo the install. Now it's a few corner cases where the install doesn't quite work, mostly with creating directories. Um, it will not empty the direct or remove the directories on uninstall. Um, this is actually particularly a problem with frameworks because a framework is essentially a big long directory structure. So all the files within the framework will get deleted, but the framework shell itself will remain there, and that's a problem we're still we're trying to resolve. Now, finally, I want to demonstrate um, the make package tool. So I should be pseudo for this as well. So make package is provided by a companion product called CPAC. Now CPAC um, is an installer generator. And basically because it know CMake already knows how to install your stuff, CPAC will basically say, well, rather than installing the stuff, why don't I make a package so you can copy this package somewhere and then I can install the package on some other system. Now CPAC has a bunch of modules that it supports. So right now I just built a tarball shell script um, installer, but um, it also has a Debian package installer and an RPM installer. And then on Windows, you can hook into um, a Windows type installer or a zip installer. And then on Mac, you can do a .pkg installer or a DMG or a bundle. Um, so CPAC is a really nice tool because it wraps nicely with the infrastructure that you already have. So this will probably be a place that we can focus in later as we get to packaging concerns.